Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome, true believers, to the Podcast Without Fear, a podcast for the Netflix show Daredevil. I am one of your hosts, Zachary Hare, but with me is, of course, Jesse Jackson. No, not that one. Yes, it is the non-Reverend Jesse Jackson here to talk about the second episode of Daredevil because... Uh, we went a little long on our first episode, didn't we, Zach? Well, that's because it was the first. It, it's always like that in first episodes, and we were uh, like, we spent like twenty minutes just talking about us and Daredevil's background. So I have to warn you, Zach. I get us off the bus pretty often. Oh, so, we call that, uh, I call that pulling a Rob Southgate. <laughs> I like that. You ever do a podcast with Rob Southgate? You will go off on tangents you wouldn't believe. <laughs> we love you, Rob. Oh, Rob's we do. Boss. Rob is one of the better po- podcasts. I mean, because he, I mean, as long as you do your job, he's quite happy with you. He gives us a lot of leeway, which is great for a podcast. I've dealt with a lot of people who don't, not to mm-hmm. name, I won't name any names. Let's just say I, I'm more happy with Rob. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's dive right into this. So we have, we have little Matt. Well, of course, we have him getting found in the dumpster, which leads into the epi- – and by Rosario Dawson, which is interesting. But I really want to talk about him doing triage on his father. Yes. Um, the episode's name is Cut Man. Um, I, I have not looked ahead at any of the other titles. Um, I guess we should set the reset that um, the premise Zach and I are doing. We're only watching two episodes a week. It's killing um, us. It is killing us, so I am trying to be spoiler-free uh, for major points, so I'm not looking at all the titles. But, uh, you know, the first episode was Into the Ring, which is a perfect title for the first episode, right? Um, we're getting into the ring. We're getting started. And then Cut Man had a lot of different meanings, not only the boxing, but um, Matt taking care of his father, and then... Um, Matt being the man who's cut as well. Well, so, cut man, uh, I believe, isn't that they, that's what they call the guy who like like fixes you up quickly in the ring, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, according to uh, yes, that was um, you know based on the Rocky movies and everything you do. Yes, he's the guy that. That's the only reason uh, I know the term is because of yes, cut me, Mick, yes. cut me. <laughs> absolutely, cut me, Mick, cut me, cut me. Yes. Well, also so, that's another absolutely. Netflix. Um, the sh- well, uh, the, that's another, another. There was a good boxing show called Lights Out. That's another I, one. I did not see that, though I've heard good things about it. I, I, I think it might have been good enough for a second season, but the first season is pretty solid. Okay, good. So I am a big fan of Rosario Dawson. Oh, me too. Um, uh, I loved her in Clerks too. Um, she's been in a lot of other stuff that it, she is. I think absolutely. And this is not her first comic book run. No, she was um, in the um, – why am I drawing a blank Sin on City. Sin City, yes. And she and, actually, when you think about it, that means this is her second connection to a Frank Miller thing. Absolutely. I thought that when I was watching. Um, and so it was really good to see her. And um, I do, I'm do. i not familiar with the character uh, I don't know if she has a – if she is in the Daredevil well, comic world. The thing is, her name isn't – but everything but her name is – she's she's got to be Night Nurse. Okay, that makes sense. Did You you didn't make that connection? No, I did not. I mean, I, I think I, th- there yeah. are three Night Nurses, but none of them are named Sharon. I'll, it could be she didn't give it her real name. But yeah. I fir- when I first saw it, uh, woman uh, nurse treating – 
superhero, I'm like, that's the night nurse. I, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know if they just gave her a different name or if maybe she gave a fake name, but it's gotta be. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I, 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 I don't know if they're going that direction, but that's what it, that's what it, um, went to me. Now, how about when, if he's doing triage on his dad, um, he gives him scotch. Now, I know he's Irish, but he's still, what, 10? Well, and, and so first off, um, it, it should be Irish whiskey. Oh. It should not be scotch, <laughs> if we're going to nitpick. <laughs> but, yes, and, uh, you know, so he's cleaning out everything. Yes, that was a great scene of showing Matt taking care of his dad. Now, and and, yes. and also the scene of Matt having to touch his dad's face oh, yeah. to see how bad of a beating he had taken. But the, the thing about the um, scotch is, and I, this is, I guess, a nitpick on my end, but a kid that age takes a sip of scotch. I don't care if he's 100% Irish. He's not going to just shiver, but he's going to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, I wonder if this was, he has actually taken a few... Uh, drinks before the other thing you think about is uh with the extra senses shouldn't that affect him even more well, like he, the that taste of that well he wasn't he wasn't super he wasn't there he, he, the accident hadn't happened at that point okay that's right i'm getting my timeline mixed up it's, that's it's right. okay it gets a little confusing with that yeah. in mind but we, and we also see we, we in this scene like his, his now I, one thing i liked is we he sees that his father took a took a well, I don't know if he realized his dad took a dive. He just knew his dad lost. We hear the fight and the guy talking about, you know, that, um, you know, Murdoch was doing so well. Then all of a sudden he, you know, he he lost the fight. I, I forgot how they put it down that he had been. The rest called the TKL, which is interesting. Yeah. Because right. last episode he said my father's never been knocked out. Technically, a TKO is a knockout, but, yeah. but but it's a technicality. But yeah, I I don't think he realized his father threw them. He just knew his dad lost, which I yeah. think is interesting. Yeah, I did not. Um, I John Patrick Hayden is the one who plays uh, Jack Murdoch, and I do not recognize him from anything else. Though he has a face that I keep thinking. I should know him from somewhere. I should know him from somewhere. But, um, you know, I'm looking at his IMDb page, and it does not look like anything that I recognize. Uh, I'll so look it up as we're talking. I'll see if anything okay. catches my eye. Okay. Um, yes, he pl- he, pl- he plays, uh, let's see, what's what's his dad's name? It's battling Jack. Is it Jack? Jack. Mur- yes, it's Jack Murdoch. Yes. And, um what I think, and this episode, like I like a comic book, this mixes uh, comedy quite good into the into the narrative, and I love how he's like, um, "Can I take the bottle?" He wants to take the bottle, go do his homework. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and once again, you know, we're pushed that um, you know his dad is saying, you know, study, study, study. You need to be. You know, you don't want to earn a living through your fists. You want to learn from your mind. Right. Well, this is interesting. I'm looking up the man playing Jack Murdoch, and he's a fairly new... I mean, I don't know if he's a stage actor, but for film, he's fairly new. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's what I said. I didn't recognize uh, really too much at all. Good. Um, It gives me hope. I'm still trying to get discovered. (laughs) Yes, there you go. Um. Yeah. So um, I, I thought the um, the scenes when Matt wakes up in the uh, Claire's uh, apartment was interesting. Uh, where you know he's kind of um, and she mentions right that you're she starts naming all the things wrong with him and you're not responding to light, which means. <laughs> You're either blind or you're in worse shape than I thought that, you were. That was great. <laughs> yes. When she's like doing the flash out of his eyes, like what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> and also we get a we it it, it flipped around a lot this episode. Cause, yes, cause they did. Because oh this because that this is also when we get the scene with Matt wake, little Matt waking up in the hospital and and we it also it, like he's his senses uh, we already see the the super senses a little bit and his father gets him to calm down by feeling his face, which is interesting. Yeah, it you know the comfort of you know that is um, 
you know, the whole idea, right, of how you see someone uh, when you are without your sight is by feeling their face and, and getting to know that feeling. So, yeah, that was um, very, very um, interesting. And we also get to start between the relationship with Foggy and Karen, and they had such – like, this really shows how good they are together, and her ability, too. It's like the, the chemistry they had, and just that little scene in the office was fantastic. Yeah, and it was really kind of interesting, the back and forth of, like, well, you're still here, yes, but I'm a partner, and I have many things to do. You don't have any – you don't have any – we don't have any clients. I, I, well, then, what are you doing here, then? And it was back and forth. Very I don't, nice. I don't know why, but for some reason, I really liked – I liked the whole scene, but I really like when he says – are you going to help – will you help dig me out of it? And she just makes that little smile and goes, not going to happen. That really – I don't know why. That set out the step you know, for me. I don't know. No, I, I agree with you. I thought it was really uh, a, a nice um, bantering back and forth. Um, and her – you know, she kind of opens up, I don't want to go home. And he's, well, then let's start. And – I always love it when a character, you know, admits to another character, ah, that didn't say right. You know, mm, that that came out wrong. Or I, I was, you know, as he's saying, couldn't you have helped me out any at all? And she's like, no, I'm just going to leave you where you are. Um, so how yes. a friend would talk. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's what makes it special. This is, I mean, I, I, I mean, I love hearing this is believable conversation. So then they jump again to Matt getting patched up and. Like she, she like like we said, she finds out he's blind and he's tr he's not giving her a lot of information. But I like how she throws that right back at him. The less, like he says, the less you know about me, the better. He's like, "Why are you helping me? The less you know about me, the better." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And I love the line. I'm gonna call you Mike. Why? A guy I used to date who is very good at keeping secrets. And there's a whole story there that you aren't shared, but you can just kind of fill in the blanks that. Um, Let's just say I don't think she had a lot of good things to say about Mike. Yeah, and so – and then we get a flashback with Matt, um, Matt and his dad. This is, we see him learning Braille, and we also see that this is when he, a little, this is, he gets a fight, and they're asking him to take a dive. Now, did you notice who his father was fighting in the main event? Um, Creed, right? Creel. Creel, and that, yes. And that, that's significant. Yes, because um, one, that's who we fought. That's who his dad fought in the comics. Yes. And two, Creel's the absorbing man. Right. Um, yes. Yeah, so very, very cool. Now, which is interesting because I know, this may be overthinking it, but but that's what we're here for, right? Uh, Zach? This we're connects. Here. Yes. This connects to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So does Agents of Shield. Creel has appeared on Agents of Shield, so I don't know if that means and but. So it's if, if this is all I mean I don't know who's gonna like I it's I think it's all about the t time yeah so this should be happen because because the timeline says this happens after Avengers yes but when when Matt was younger this would have been um, so it may be a different Creel. No, it's the same. Well, Creel was a boxer. I, I, mean, okay. I don't know if they said so. It could because he didn't get his powers till way late. Although, right. it, what's interesting about Agents of Shield, they completely copped out with because in the comics his powers are magical. Yes, and uh, they copped out with it because they, as we know, Marvel is just deathly afraid of magic in the cinematic universe. <laughs> yes, which is going to make it interesting to do a Doctor Strange movie. Right, I cannot. I mean, they can't. They can't say, "Oh, he's learning a science." We don't know. It's not science. He's literally casting magic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we see. Um, they're telling him this. I mean, it's a, obviously a big match, and they're telling him the throw. And what's interesting is that Matt can hear it, so he knows that there is. His father is agreeing to throw a fight. And, and that uh, is a yeah. significant moment in not only the series, this early series, but in the Matt's life. You know, in the comics, it's a big thing. This is, you know, no, no father or mother, for that matter, no parent wants their child to be disappointed in them. Right. And this is – I thought they played that very well, and um, so it was it was good to see, and I thought they played it just in the right tone. 
Yes, indeed. And now we go back to Ma- uh, Matt and Claire. And I like how he, she's like, I can. There's a guy coming up the stairs. He smells like cheap cologne. And like she's like, how can you smell a guy on the third floor? And then she, and, yeah, go ahead. No, and I, I was just gonna finish her thought. And then when she meets him, right, she's like, you were kidding about that cologne. Yeah, that was great. Was just, it was a great payoff. Indeed, yes. And um, she, he's like, he's going to fight him, and she stops him and talks him out. And he's, he's like, why is this woman helping me? And I, I, I love when he goes. You, he didn't believe you. And then Shades of American Psycho, he grabs, well, obviously that was a chainsaw. This is a fire extinguisher, but it still made me think of that. When um, he, And then he takes the fire and aims and drops it, which I, I could be wrong, and this isn't might be a nitpick, but I think that would kill him. You know, I, I, I thought so, too. Um, what I thought was really interesting, and I thought a little bit of uh, the Minority Report – where um you know the where she could see the future and so yeah. she was like you know pick up an umbrella and i loved him being able to hold it till just the right moment you know where he's figured out that i know that the speed and what's going to do but if i drop it off here and maybe that's why he knew it wouldn't kill him it would just be a glancing oh blow. yeah oh okay i can buy that i can completely buy that and yeah. I, I love you. I was, I'm surprised you didn't go. How do you know he's lying? He's speaking Russian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good point. Yes, afterwards, yes, he could hear that. So, um, yeah, really, really nice. And I did love that she's like, "Look, see, you don't have to go stabby, stabby. You know, you can we just and like this is the only knife you have. I use it to cut vegetables." <laughs> yeah, and so we we flash back yet again. Oh, then we get that scene. We gotta bring him to the fly because no one will hear him scream, and which he still goes along with, which is interesting. But then we flash back to Froggy, and um, I swear to God, ever since I started reading the comics, I almost call him Froggy every time. I swear to God. Yes, I I, I can see that. Yes. But okay, so they're at the now. I forget. I don't know if Josie's is mentioned in the comics. It sounds like it would be. I should... Um, I don't remember that. Uh, I wonder. If that's um, – it, if it is, it isn't something that I'm familiar with. So he, she's, they're drinking together, and we get some nice back and forth, and she opens up to him a little bit about, like, why she wants to go back home. He's like, oh, I'll fix up you. She's like, it's not that. It's about feeling – like, she felt so vulnerable and helpless, and she hates that feeling. Yeah, that was a really nice scene and, and some good emotion. Um, it it felt, and I know this is a cliche, but it felt real, right? These were two people talking and just really nicely done. Yes, and it, it was a short scene, but it was a good scene. I like when he's like, oh, these are my friends. And he's, and he's like, oh, that guy is a criminal, but he's changing. <laughs> yes, and then I did like that we drink free. No, you don't drink free. You know, well, let's we'll agree to disagree. 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 <laughs> yes. So we go back. We're back. We're on the roof now. And I love he's like, he's on. Unco- How do you know? He could be faking. It. He's not. He's like, they're right there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're a blind guy who jumps off roof. Day and she's trying to tell stuff. And then we get. OK, okay I want. I almost want to say it right. But I forget what exactly what she says. Like, you take a bunch of punishments out complaining. And she, and she he says one of my my favorite line I think of the show so far, the last parts of Catholicism. Yes, it was um, really really well done. I agree, a great line. Let's see what's the what she say? Oh oh, he can take an un- unbelievable amount of punishment without one damn complaint, and he goes that that last parts of Catholicism. Yes, very good. And then this is when she tells. Him, like he, because even he's like, you didn't call the cops at all. Why? And she tells him that words getting around him that that he's there to help people, and he tells her about the trap with the boy. So this is when she decides to help him with the with with, with the interrogation because she she knows if he's he, she's her instincts tell her he's a good guy. Yeah, and I do like the idea that they dotted that I cross that T, right? Why would someone just help this guy that's in a garbage dump? And it's because word has gotten around that there is someone helping the neighborhood. And we've established that this is the world that has the Avengers. So, you know, there is Iron Man and there is Thor and 
um, you know, Captain America. So this is not something that it is unusual, but she sees that whoever this guy is, let's call him Mike, is trying to make a difference in this neighborhood. So therefore, you know, whatever she can do to help a little bit, she's doing. It's interesting because I'm suddenly reminded of, I forget which one it was, but there was an issue of Marvel where Galactus came and all the heroes are going to fight him and Spider-Man dealt over there and they're like, what the heck are we going to do? I, I remember that too. You know, they're kind of looking at like, what? What? Yes. Yeah. And uh, so we ha- now we have another flashback here. Now we see the cost. Now it's interesting because we already we already know what Daredevil's costume is going to look like, but because a lot of uh, listeners might not know this, but Daredevil's original costume was actually yellow. Yes, and the joke was that only a blind man would have come up with something um, that ugly. Um, I'm old enough to remember the yellow costume. It did not bother me. No, because so, there was a reason for it. It was his dad's yeah. original, and and as we see here. It's red and gold on this one, too. That's probably a shout-out to the costume. Absolutely. So, and this is his son's talking about not giving in, not being, and, like, this this is when the father decides to not throw the fight. And and he, he, but he, he's just, it's like, I love the scene where he calls someone who I'm assuming is Matt's mother and says, I just want Matt to cheer for his dad. Well, I want Matt to hear people cheer his dad's name one time. And he puts a bu- now we don't know how much, but it's I'm guessing this money is one of the things that helped pay for Matt to go to law school. Yeah, I think so. You would think that his dad took everything they owned, uh, put it away. Knew, I think he knew in his heart of hearts that there was a chance he wasn't going to get away. I think he he thought there was a chance, and I think he was you know planning to. It wasn't like this was a suicide mission. But he also understood that things may not work out and he may not escape. Right. Zach, do you think Matt manipulated his father to not throw the fight? Do you think because what he heard his dad talking about, is that why he made those comments? Is that why he kind of steered the conversation in that direction? Um, I, I mean, I did. I was thinking that. And I, I got to say, I'm not sure. Okay. Because I, 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 I'm, it could be, I just, I'm not, I don't know. So if, we, oh yeah, go ahead. You know, if I had to say, I would think it was a little bit, but I agree with you. It, once again, we're only two episodes in, but they are not taking the easy path and they are not doing the, and I will say this again, the, the yellow neon sign saying, look, look. Look what I did here. This is important. I manipulated my father to not throw the fight. Um, so, and that's good. Yes, and then, so we're back on the rooftop, and we see um, Claire's all masked up. And I find it interesting when she helps him, to, like, she helps him torture him. Well, she gives him a way she can, like, torture him without, like, fatally killing him. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, too, kind of. Uh, you know, well, I'm in for a little bit. I guess I should be in for it all, right? Which I, which I, I like. Oh, um, I like when he throws him off the the, the roof. Well, he says, um, "There will always be money." He's like, "Yeah." And when he the next guy comes, he'll be strung up on this roof too until someone tells me what I want to hear. Yeah, and um, it was. Um, this is not a show that is going to shy away from violence. And showing that, you know, we've already talked about that Matt can take a beating and his opponents are taking a beating. The criminals are there. So it's going to be um, interesting. That rooftop was a good scene. And I, I knew that Matt wouldn't kill him, but I was not sure how far he would go short of killing him. Yeah, when he threw him off the roof. I, I figured, though, that... He, I'm like, oh, that's where the dumpster is. <laughs> and I like how freaked out she gets. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Now we flash. He gets the information he needs, and we see we go back to the fight, and he oh god, that moment when he hears the people chant his name was awesome. Yes, it was a really good scene, and you know, and you wonder, and and I think they made that point that you know if did that just few minutes of listening to that make the difference between getting away or not. 
Yeah, we almost made it, but now, of course, we sadly get the the scene where uh, now, of course, it's just, he, he hear, Matt hears the gunshot and he goes down to check on check on things. Although this scene, it's like, hey, come on, man, he's blind. Oh, sh- sure, let him in. It's like, oh no, that doesn't mean you let him in. Still, stop the kid. <laughs> yeah, you would think even more, right? Uh, like. We need to protect this kid, you know. It, it reminds me of Willy Wonka. No, stop, don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, oh, I had not thought of that, but that's perfect. But okay, but it's and we go to he feels his face and he knows it's him. But then we go right back to um, which well, is probably what's driving Matt all through this mission. Now I read this somewhere, and it looks like it's true that this whole thing was done in one shot. I have seen headlines of talking about the long shot. But since I had not seen the episodes, I've stayed away from spoilers. So um, I will have to um, check that out now that we've seen this. Well, as, as, and also the best thing I've seen, and it was mentioned on, like, I think, College Humor Dorkly, someone put, this fight scene from the Daredevil is better than the whole movie. <sighs> okay, now we've already talked about you and I don't have a lot of hate toward Ben Affleck and, and the movie is not as bad as everyone says it is there's problems but you know but anyway okay I just thought that was fight still but it's a great you know, it's fight. a great line it's a wonderful line I just you know it's, a, anyway. it's, an, it's an awesome fight. now this is a real this is a this is a brawl it is a brawl and it is it's it's nasty and it's and it, it looks painful and they're getting their you know, butts kicked and it was, it was great. Yeah, it was a good, it was definitely a good fight scene. Now, what about him taking off his mask? I'm, I know it's probably so the kid won't be afraid of him, but he still took off his mask. Yeah, um, I had a little bit of okay with that, that he was trying to protect the kid, though I, <laughs> you just kind of, you worry, you know, like, do you not care about your secret identity? And even though you don't have a secret identity yet, but, um, yeah, it was, it was very much, he's protecting this kid. And, um, and I, I mixed emotions on it, right? I, I, I get why they did it, but you also, is that the smartest thing to do? Well, he only, obviously put his mask right back on, because it, it could be believable that, the kid wouldn't remember because, you know, it's traumatic experience, da, 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 that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the episode. Again, this episode, and this episode of the podcast is obviously shorter, but we might keep it. We'll see. We'll, we'll let the man in charge decide yeah. what they do with so, these episodes. So it felt like this second episode was a little quicker. Yes. Um, it, it, the first one felt longer than the 45, 50 minutes, I think because it was so much story. This one was a cleaner, uh, even though I guess maybe because we had the two timelines back and forth, um, uh, still very good. Um, you know, I would give it eight and a half boxer robes. Um, but, um, certainly, you know, a strong and um, when you put the two together, we've already talked about it is a good an introduction to this world uh, as we could have expected. Yeah, I'm completely good. So I'm giving I'll give this a good rating all around. I, I again, not, I there was not one part where I where which for a superhero show nowadays is interesting. There wasn't one part when I went, oh god. Yeah. Which I'm very happy. There's not there has not been one face palm moment in this show so far, which really impresses me for a superhero show. Yeah, they seem to be doing it right, and uh, I'm very happy about that. The casting is spot on. Uh, I've liked the characters, and so I am really looking forward to seeing the next two episodes. Any other final thoughts before we um, get out of here? You know, I can't. I think we've touched upon it good. I'm, I'm very excited to watch the next two episodes, so I can't wait. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Zach, thank you as always for getting us started and taking us through this wonderful discussion. Listeners, thank you. Uh, I can be reached at JWJ170104 on Twitter. I am also on Facebook, Jesse.Jackson.com. 
in Louisville, Texas. Uh, where can we find you, Zach? You can find me on the edge of nowhere. No, no, kidding. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Inch from Insanity, and look for me on Facebook. And also check out some of the other po- shows we all podcast for. So it'll be great. Got yes. some r- great things in the work. And uh, this one seems like it'll be n- no different. Absolutely. Uh, we are working on uh, getting a Twitter uh, handle for the show, but for now, hit up Zach and I if you had feedback. Um, my um, um, go to um, the Southgate Media Facebook page, and my if you want to send email, um, you can send it to jesse.jackson2 at verizon.net. And if you want to give us some thoughts on the show, we'll read it next time. Um, I think that's it. Uh, We've gone through the first two. Uh, Yay for us that we didn't go through. Now that we're going to have to see if we can just do episode three and four without binging, Zach. We'll have to see. Yes. All right, take us out, Jesse. I will. Remember, guys, we Murdochs get hit a lot, but we always get up. Thanks, everyone. Bye.